Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be breaking down and discussing the character Jesus during the mid-season finale for Season 9 of The Walking Dead, along with the entire situation going around it. This is an article with the actor, so hopefully we'll get more context and we'll get shed more light on it all, but with all that being said, major warning and spoilers for everything in the show up to episode 908, and I do mean major spoilers, but let's jump right into this. So. The article is titled, They Knew I Was A Bit Unhappy. The Walking Dead star says he was frustrated and bored with his role on the show. So let's talk about Jesus. So he was on Talking Dead because, you know, spoiler alert, the character died in Season 9, Episode 8, and I just, I just can't believe it. I have a full video discussing it if you want to check that out, but this article will hopefully shed some light on the entire situation because his actor was on Talking Dead, as I was going to say, and he just acted strange. He just, well, he acted like a positive type of strange, but it was still kind of strange. He was just oddly complacent. He was very happy, he was very cheerful, so you know, he was being positive, but even Chris Hardwick kind of joked about how good of an attitude he had about it. He seemed oddly content, you know, and this article just kind of helps make his attitude make more sense, I guess. And you know, I skimmed through this article once, and honestly, everything just kind of makes sense now. So, first off, he just talks about how when he got the call to get written off of the show, he was just super casual about it. He just kind of acted like, oh hey, I'm gonna wake up and brush my teeth and, you know, get some, get a cup of coffee ready, and oh hey, I got written off of the show of The Walking Dead, and alright, let's start the car and go get some groceries. Like, he just acted like... It was nothing special, like it was just something, you know, that he was kind of expecting, something that maybe he kind of wanted, and it also says here that the Jesus death was ruined for months, I'm not sure how true that was, I didn't really get told about the Jesus death until like episode 906, and even then it wasn't until like literally a day or two beforehand, like on the Friday and the Saturday before the Sunday that uh, his death episode aired, that I actually started getting a lot of comments about it, so... I don't know if this person was, you know, just more avid in the spoiler community, but yeah, it was a huge shock, it was just completely BS, but apparently Tom Payne felt it was time to go. And this little part here just kind of says it all. He says, I was kind of frustrated with what I had gotten to do on the show, and I was kind of a bit bored with it. He said about his role with Jesus, if I wasn't being given anything, I was kind of ready to go. Just that right there, if he wasn't being given anything, he was ready to go. And just think about it, it's it's not unknown that the character Jesus has been unused for seasons now. He's a crazy combat heavy character in the comics, he's a complete badass, and in the show he was just really underused, and it seems here that he feels, well, if I'm being underused, if I'm not doing anything interesting, why am I even on this show right now? You know, I don't kind of want to just stand in the corner and do nothing. If I'm on The Walking Dead, I want to be doing some crazy stuff. And so scrolling down a bit more of the article about him talking about how he was stuck in the hilltop all the time, he really seems like he was disappointed that he was never in any action scenes that, well, I mean, he had that one scene with Morgan, but, like, that was literally it, and even that felt a bit forced, and then when he was doing the scenes with Morgan, he was so into it, his actor was so happy that he got this crazy choreographed scene, fight scene with Morgan, but that's really, like, one of the only times, if not the only time, that he got to use his crazy combat training because the actual actor for Jesus did a bunch of training and martial arts and he obviously read up on the comics, he was super hyped, and then it just kind of never happened. And even here it says that he couldn't say enough about how excited he was to just be off of the hilltop set and to instead get to be in a sequence with others. So maybe if Jesus was out doing runs, maybe out in more battles or doing more things instead of just chilling around at the hilltop, then maybe he wouldn't have wanted to leave the show. Maybe he'd still be on the show right now and maybe we wouldn't have this issue. It seems as though the actor just kind of stood around for like two or three years waiting to be utilized, 
waiting to get the front line and he never did and he understands that there's a lot of characters on the show it's not like it's the jesus show you know it was the rick Grimes show but now that he's gone everyone's kind of fighting for attention on the show and it's kind of too little too late for him because they showed a lot of him in episodes 906 and 907 and 908 but at that point they already knew that they were going to kill him off so it wasn't natural character progression it was just set up for his death and that's kind of disappointing and right here he says, you know, it was really fun to work with other actors and he doesn't want to throw anyone under the bus or throw shade at anyone. He did enjoy working with Lauren Cohan and Xander Berkeley, who played uh, Gregory and obviously Maggie and then Caitlin who played uh, who plays Enid and then uh, Sonequa Martin-Green who plays Sasha. And, you know, he loves those actors. He had a good time, you know, working with them, but... What he really loved was going and doing this death scene, which was outside of the hilltop. It's what he really wanted, and they gave it to him. And as we scroll up here, we can see that Tom Payne only had one request for Jesus to be written out of the show, and that's he wanted the death to be cool. He wanted it to be around a lot of people. He wanted Jesus to be shown as a tough guy, and he wanted it to be a complete surprise, which it definitely was. And you know, it really is a shame that the actor got underused so much, it's a shame that the character never got utilized to his fullest extent, because the actor did do training for it, and he was obviously disappointed about it as well. Maybe if he got out more and did more action scenes, he wouldn't have felt so, uh, so secluded. And it's kind of funny, because Jesus on the show felt like he just wanted to go out and have fun, he wanted to go out on runs, he snuck out to hang out with Aaron, and then the thing that got him killed was the fact that he let his guard down because he was just out killing zombies having fun, and it kind of relates to the actual actor as well because the actor felt like he was stuck at Hilltop all the time, the actor wanted to go out and do crazy stunts and go and do fun things, so I mean it's kind of funny how the character's final arc kind of relates to the way Way that the actor feels about the character in general and along with it connecting to the reason why he was taken off of the show. Jesus was just on the sidelines as someone who breaks up arguments instead of actually fighting people and on Talking Dead uh, the actor even joked about how it was nice to see Jesus fighting someone who isn't on his side for once and that's true he's always trying to calm people down who are on his side. He tried uh, breaking up the argument originally when Rick very first went to the hilltop and all of that happened and then he also tries calming down Morgan and all of that he he's just always trying to calm people down make them think rationally make them think reasonably he's a huge moral compass and I mean the comic book version of him was a moral compass as well but they really kind of emphasized that on the show and they really morphed that into what his character turned out to be and I mean he could have always been a moral compass that's not an issue it's just I wish that they would have done more combat and more action alongside that I wish they would have evened that out more you know and so, you know, Jesus got shafted year after year, and I guess the actor was just as upset about it as some of the fans were. I'm kind of all over the place here just because of the way that they structured this, uh, this article. And, you know, so I keep looking at this headliner, a mutual decision to leave the show. I guess that they were kind of, you know, they had a mutual agreement. Uh, the actor felt like he was bored with the show because he never got to do anything, and then the showrunner and the creator of the show, they're like, okay, we feel ya, and if you want to be written off of the show just for the sake of being able to do something, well, hey, the mid-season finale is coming up and we need something to happen, so here you go, we get our death, we get a big moment, and you get to be written off of the show in the cool, perfect way that you wanted, so it's a win-win, and I guess that's why the actor, you know, kind of has a smile on his face because he got the best of a bad situation. I feel like I respect the way that he's acting, I... I mean, he's acting about the best that he can, and I just feel like Tom Payne just kind of stopped caring, you know? He just kind of didn't really... He just didn't really care about whether he stayed on the show, or if he died, or what the deal was. He says here, I'm pretty happy with the whole thing, I just wanted to tell a good story and be a part of a shocking moment on the show, so... And that's good and all, you know, you want your character to have a big moment, you want him to have a send-off, and if you get to have an iconic death on The Walking Dead, like, that's a pretty big thing. 
And as far as the mutual decision goes, apparently Jesus, you know, was talking about wanting to be off the show for a while now. It's not just recently, apparently the past year. And so as far as the mutual agreement goes, Angela King goes into her reasoning as to why she wanted to kill off Jesus, I guess. And her reasoning is that they wanted to introduce the whispers, they wanted the viewers to know that the whispers mean business, and so I guess they needed to kill off a main character, someone who they knew that the viewers cared about and that they'd be upset about, uh, to sort of make us hate the whispers and to know that they mean business, but right here she says, there's a death in the comic book as a result, so we knew that there would have to be some sort of epic fight that led to it and all of this, but the thing is, I'm not sure what she means here. I don't know if she's talking about the water tower death, which I will have a separate video on, but... I don't know if she's talking about that or if she's talking about what actually happened during the comics at this point because during the comics there wasn't actually a major character who died. There were a bunch of red shirts, there were just a bunch of kingdom soldiers, Alexandria soldiers, there were just a bunch of patrolmen who ended up dying and it wasn't actually any main character who died when they went out to search for Ken which was the comic book equivalent of searching for Eugene and actually if you want you know a video breakdown of the whole Whole Rosita, Eugene, Ken, and Marco comic book comparison. I just did a video on that, so you know, feel free to check that out. But sometimes in these articles, they just kind of it. The grammar is just kind of awkward because maybe it was an audio interview and then it gets translated over into text for you know the web page. And so when you read it, it just kind of doesn't have the correct grammar that it should. So yeah, they wanted to kill off someone to show that the whispers meant business. They wanted it to be someone that they knew the viewers would care about and Jesus is one of those moral compass characters that you know he never has really done anything wrong he's only ever done good he's only ever tried to resolve situations and you know work out compromises and get people to understand both perspectives and he's really kind of just a third person perspective type of guy and here it is. See, I'm going all over the article because I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to discuss it in my own way, but they they have everything that I want to talk about in different orders. So I'm just constantly going up and down trying to trying to figure out wh where I'm trying to, you know, grab examples from. This is kind of a mess low key, but but no worries, no worries. We're just going through this article trying to figure out what the heck is going on here. And so it says here that Jesus was someone who really, you know, carried a torch of togetherness and unity for our people, pretty much what I was just trying to say about how people really care about Jesus, but the thing is, I don't even really know if we needed to have a major character death to show that the whispers meant business, and maybe if we did, we should have had it more down the road, like during episode 12, 13, or 14 of this season during just kind of a random episode so it wasn't a mid-season finale or a mid-season premiere so we weren't really expecting anything. Again, I go more into that in my actual Jesus a Death video, feel free to check that out, but man, I'm just trying to not talk in circles here, but I just can't help myself. This is just so freaking ridiculous, or I initially thought it would, but now after reading this article, everything does just kind of make sense. It's like, we're connecting all the dots and everything. It's like, okay, yeah, that totally makes sense why he's acting that way, and just because initially, I was so shocked when, when I initially heard about the spoilers that Jesus would get killed off of the show, I just brushed that aside because it made no sense. I thought it was completely ridiculous, but when you consider all of this behind the scenes and how the actor felt about his character and how he was bored with the show and how he never got to do anything, and so they kind of had this mutual agreement where they're like, okay, we need to kill someone off and you want to do something for once, you don't really care if you get killed off, so how about we give you the cool, perfect death and give you all the things that you've wanted, but at the same time we get we want, you you're off the show and we have a cool death and it's a shame that they didn't just give him what he wanted while he was on the show in the first place but as I said I guess the actor is kind of cutting his losses and so I do kind of commend him for keeping a smile on his face and just being so polite and mature and respectful about this entire situation because he kind of did get the shaft for like two to three years here. And you know, this has to do with what I was just saying. It says, I asked Payne if it was his choice to leave the show because of his frustrations with his role, and he just insisted that it was a decision between both him and the show. So, you know, he's being mature about it, he's not pointing fingers going, they didn't give me enough screen time, they didn't give me enough action, 
I wanted off the show. This is BS. I felt like I was being underused. You know, he didn't, you know, curse up a storm. He kept it professional and he said it was kind of a mutual thing, even though, you know, he does have his reasons. They knew that I was a bit unhappy and I had said, I don't care what happens. We just need to kill some more people. Just kill me. So there you go. He just doesn't even care anymore. He just wants something to happen. And he even goes to say that he understands that there's so many characters on the show, so it's difficult for everyone to get screen time. So, hey, if someone has to go to give other people screen time, I mean, if I'm not going to get screen time, then let's kill me off in a cool way, and then at least some of my co-workers will get a time to shine. And I mean, I literally just said that he's trying to not throw shade, but he does low-key kind of do that here because he says, We were in the middle of a war with saviors, and then Carl Chandler Riggs was really the only person who died, and I thought that was a bit weird. And that is kind of funny because, I mean, we did have a bunch of random red shirts who died, here and there and a bunch of random saviors who died throughout the season but as far as our main characters go we didn't really have anyone who died during all out war like we had carl who died but it's kind of ironic because he died for a completely unrelated reason he didn't die because of negan he didn't die because of the saviors he died because he went off and did something and you know he let his card down just like jesus did so, you know, that goes to show if you let your guard down for one moment, you know, that could be the end of you in a zombie apocalypse. Here we go. Here's the part that I wanted to read. It says, regardless, Kang knows that Jesus' death will sting with the readers of the comic book. So, Angela Kang knows that. Obviously, for some comic book readers who love the character of Jesus, this will be a big blow. But we've often deviated from the comics in death throughout history. And yeah, that's true. And they've, you know, remixed certain characters and certain characters on the show act completely completely different than they do in the comics and sometimes that's for the better sometimes that's for the worst but I don't really think that that's you know a good excuse to say oh well you know we've deviated before so it's okay that we deviated this time it's kind of not okay that you deviated Jesus's character this much I mean it's fine that he became a huge moral compass it's fine that you know he became what he was but I mean you did underuse him he probably should have been in more action scenes and you I don't know don't don't try and underplay that by just saying oh hey we've remixed things before so it's okay that we didn't utilize Jesus's character fully right and I mean granted people that don't read the comics don't even know who comic book Jesus is so they don't have any reason to be happy or sad about how much action Jesus may or may not have gotten you know fighting doing all of his combat and all of that but I mean, I digress, that is a nitpick because, you know, comic book fans, I don't want to seem like a picky comic book fan who only complains because things aren't like the comics, you know, things can be different than the comics, everything doesn't have to be the same by all means. I think that a lot of things in the show are better because it's different than the comics because when you think about it, you know, the comic books, they do everything for the first time, but then if they look back and they're like, oh, I wish I could have done this differently or I wish I could have improved on that, well, they do that for for the show they improve on everything for the show or at least they try to they try to make everything better they try to remix everything and they try to you know give justice where credit is due but yeah i really think that if people are going to be upset about jesus leaving the show and about jesus getting killed off it's going to be because he was such a popular character yeah he was a popular character in the comics and in the show as well and just both of those things right there, there's so many different reasons why people would be mad because regardless of if you like Jesus just for TV show Jesus or if you like Jesus because of comic book Jesus, you know, there's a lot of people that think that he got underused regardless. And even Tom Payne says right here, I think there will be backlash because he, I don't think he's gotten quite the storylines that people might have been expecting. And he's saying here that he thinks that the actual death is really strong. He thinks that, you know, how it happens and how it's a surprise and how epic it is, everything that he wanted it to be, it is. And so he doesn't think that people are going to be mad about how the death actually happened or how Jesus died. They're just going to be mad because, you know, Jesus was underused. He wasn't given his full potential. And as I said, Tom Payne is kind of upset for the same reasons. And he goes into more detail here. He goes into multiple moments, such as talking about during All Out War. He says, I didn't get Jesus has the other fight with Negan. 
and there you go with the grammar again but yeah there's a moment in the comics where during the second lineup uh, which i guess would be the season 8 finale in the tv show when uh, Shiva and Maggie and Ezekiel and everyone come around and they save Rick and they save the day. In the comics, it was actually initially Jesus and so there it, it happened outside of Alexandria and there's kind of a trench that's dug around Alexandria and Jesus like snuck his way uh, to behind some of the saviors and he ended up kind of you know maneuvering his way in he tackled a few and he actually made his way to Negan and managed to uh, hold Negan uh, captive for a moment or two before Negan broke out of it but there's a few epic moments that he's had in the comics that he never got in the show another moment is during All Out War when I guess it would have been halfway through season 8 when uh, Negan was bombing Alexandria Jesus was actually there and he grabbed one of the grenades and threw it back over the wall and it blew up like a whole group of saviors it was pretty crazy and then right after Jesus does that, he actually pops over the wall to see Dwight betraying the saviors. And so that was the moment that Dwight kind of proves himself in the TV show. It was during that ambush on the road when they tried leading them away. And he did it in front of Daryl and uh, Rosita and all of them because there he's kind of more connected to those characters. But in the comics, it was randomly Jesus who kind of just popped his head up and said, Oh, hey, good to know we're still on the same side, I guess. Oh, and of course, people are going to be upset about how we never truly saw the Jesus and Aaron relationship come to fruition. It was just episode 906 or episode 907 that I did a sneak peek promo breakdown where I was like, oh my god, are we finally going to see the Jesus and Aaron relationship? Little did I know that scene was about all we were going to see of it period we were already getting about all we were ever going to get and i was thinking oh what else are we gonna get this is gonna lead no that's all we were ever gonna get if oh man that's kind of disappointing you know i mean at least they got to show the little bit that they did but it is really disappointing if they would have just had jesus die like two or three or four episodes later just in the back half of season nine then i feel like he would have gotten so much more time to kind of you know help evolve his character during this six year time skip or rather after this six year time skip because you know he didn't really get much screen time at all during season seven or season eight and then season nine at least during the first five episodes that was all kind of rick centric so he got that one scene with maggie and that was it and now that i think about it that one scene with maggie where he's talking to her about going uh to confront negan that's like the last real scene that maggie and jesus had together and that's the last scene that they really will ever have together and that's just so crazy to think about when i was watching that scene i just thought it was any other scene when I was doing the sneak peek for it. I just thought it was any other sneak peek. I didn't actually think that that was the final Jesus and Maggie scene. What the heck? You know, it's just really interesting how Tom Payne truly understands why people are going to be disappointed about this, why they feel like Jesus' character was underused, and the reason why he just so perfectly represents this is because I guess that's how he felt deep down inside as well, and so, you know, he's not only kind of explaining how fans will feel, he's kind of explaining how he feels as well in sort of a polite way. And I definitely agree with pretty much everything that he's saying here, and, and what he says here also helps support what I was saying. And so I definitely agree with pretty much everything that he says in this article, and what he even says here kind of supports what I was saying because he says, honestly, that's one part of the story that I feel is slightly unfair for the audience in regards to the whole uh, Jesus and Aaron thing because he says, um, because we had the season premiere, but that's like seven years ago at this point. And then, yeah, we had these two episodes. I mean, they put in what they could. I guess that that was a little nice nod towards the comics and their potential relationship. So yeah, they put in a lot of nods. They put in a lot of tribute. They put in a lot of hey, let's give this character, let's pay respects to this character and what he could have been and what he should have been and I don't know, like, it's great that they got to give Jesus that final spark at the end, but it's just such a shame because right until the moment that he died, I thought that this was a lead up, I thought this was build up to create Jesus into a more badass character. I thought he was 
going to be on the front lines more from now. Maybe he'd get more screen time from now on. Maybe he'll get all the things that he should have gotten the past few years, but nope, they're just going to give him a little taste of that and then kill him off of the show. And I mean, right here, they just agreed that they were really good friends in regard to the Jesus Aaron thing, but on Talking Dead, they did say like, hey, why not? They could have hooked up. So I mean, whatever you want your head cannon to be, I guess. And then for the rest of the article, they just kind of joke around on whether or not the actor is going to cut his hair off. They did the same thing on Talking Dead, even to the point that Chris Hardwick pulled out scissors and jokingly pretended to cut off some of his hair. But, you know, that's pretty much it for the article. It doesn't really end on any juicy details. Honestly, the juiciness is kind of just at, be at the beginning and it's sprinkled out throughout all of it. Just that main part that he says right here where he says, if I wasn't being given anything, I was kind of ready to go. That just says it all in my eyes, that just says it all, and then at the very end where he says it was a mutual decision, you know, I wasn't really doing anything with my character, I didn't really care if I got killed off, and they needed someone to kill off, so it just kind of worked hand in hand, so that's why it's they're not saying, oh, the actor wanted off the show, or oh, it was the show creators who wanted to kill him off because they needed a death, or whatever. Uh, it's kind of 50-50, so they're kind of just taking equal blame. They pretty much, I guess, just don't want the fans to be mad at either or, and I guess that's a smart way to go about it. I hope that it works out, but I'm glad that the actor acknowledged that, you know, he was underutilized and that he kind of just got bored with the show because he got fed up with hanging out at Hilltop for three seasons, and it really is a shame that Jesus didn't get more combat, it's a shame that they couldn't work something out, but I mean, I guess the actor's happy with this, he's content, he's kind of made his peace with it, so I guess we should, you know, find our peace as well. You know, I am happy that they mentioned, you know, all the things that Jesus did in the comics that he didn't get to do in the show. I think that they really hit the hammer on the nail in regards to that, as far as predicting why fans would be upset and how they'd feel with this, and for once, they're, it actually feels like they're on the same page as us, which is nice, especially considering just how absolutely shocked and appalled and confused I was over this entire Jesus death situation. So, with that being said, this video is incredibly long, see, this is why uh, this is why I like to kind of make my videos more structured and why I don't just ramble on because if I don't shut this video down right now, I'm going to be talking until the friggin show comes back on in February. So with all that being said, let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know how you guys feel about the Jesus death and how this article sheds more light into the entire situation. Do you feel better now that you know more about how the actor feels about it all? I mean, I kind of do. I, it kind of at least makes more sense for me because I I was just so confused, I was wondering if the actor did want off the show or if they just fired him. I was just so confused as to where this all even came from, but I guess it was just kind of the combination of the actor kind of just getting fed up with not being able to do anything for multiple years and then they just wanted an easy out, so I guess they just worked out a deal and then there you go. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below, but that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today. It really helps me out more than you can imagine. Feel free to subscribe for more Walking Dead content in the near future, and if you'd like to take the extra step in helping support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon as well. Also, follow me on Twitter too if you'd like, link to both of those in the description. And follow me on Twitter too if you'd like, link to both of those in the description. I'm always trying to retweet everything and anything I can involving the Walking Dead universe, such as the article and other promo images and things like that. But yeah, as always, I thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out!